Well, results like this with scale finishes enamel and cheap, I mean cheap, automotive 2K. And when I say cheap, $27 for a quart kit, enough for about 40 models. Stay tuned and I'll show you how I got there. Welcome back to Got Fuels Model Car Garage. This is Brian. We're back at you with the uh, Revell 32 Ford 5 Window Coupe. Uh, we're finally going to do some painting and some clear cutting. Got all my uh, other small parts uh, painted, some prime. Uh, but we're going to focus today on the body and the uh, other smaller parts. Uh, like the fenders and the chassis. I don't know if we're going to do the chassis in this paint, but um, uh, the front cowl, some other little things. Uh, I went to, I'm using, I'm going to use Scale Finishes Ford Aspen Gold. This says it's the gloss enamel, pre thin. Shake well before you spray 20 to 30 psi. That's something I do need to do. Let me go ahead and see. So we can get started at 20 psi. about 20. Couldn't find any uh, application use videos, how to apply, how to's on YouTube. So this is either going to be a how to or how not to. Um, I couldn't find any direct links off of Scale Finishes website on um, instructions on how to apply. I finally had to um, just Google uh, Scale Finishes Application Guide, and this is what I come up with. Now, I've been told uh, some other comments on my YouTube, just, just for reference. This is uh, a base coat. It's, it also says it's pre-thin, spray at 20 to 30 PSI. Um, I was told that their base coats are lacquers, and according to their website, it says scale, scale finish colors are solvent based enamel base coats that require a clear coat to achieve a glossy finish. So uh, according to their website, uh, the base coats are enamels and not lacquers. Um, so we're going to focus today on the gloss enamel. It's in their website here says that um, uh, scale finishes gloss enamels are automotive grade acrylic enamels and do not require a clear coat. But I will be putting a 2K clear on. Um, that's what uh, I use a lot of for parts paint. Uh, I even painted my cameo pickup with an acrylic enamel and I use a matte additive to my clear coat uh, for that so I know there's not going to be any issues um, it says apply two to three light even coats apply a mist coat to give an even out on metallics is what a mist coat is is a final coat it's it's actually a drop coat um, it says 10 to 15 minutes flash time between coats, air dry times at 70 degrees, dust free 40 minutes, tape free 6 hours, light handling overnight, buffing if necessary, 1500 or finer grit paper uh, after 24 hours. But we're going to put it in the, uh, in the dehydrator, make sure everything's good to set up. So hopefully in one video, we'll do the paint and the clear coat. So. I've already got the room misted down with, uh, with water. Sealing fans off. Give this a good shake. This is just by looking in. It, it's, it is really thin paint.
So hopefully I'll have enough. This is, this is enough to do. I'm assuming about three coats on this and get the chassis painted. If I don't have enough paint, then I'll use the same yellow I used on the interior on the chassis. So let me get my respirator out. And afterwards, uh, I'll give you my thoughts and see what see what I think. Uh, respirator's on. A little test spray, and uh, we'll see how this works out. Pretty good so far. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about this section because that'll be a uh, flat black anyways, all the way around to the bottom. Thank you. 
Alright. Looking pretty good so far. Going in with coat two. All right, we just finished up with coat two. Now I think I'm going to leave it. Uh, I was able to get the chassis done too, and uh, this is a two ounce bottle. I used about an ounce of it, just a little less than half of it. And I, I have noticed that it is like the automotive acrylic enamels that I use. That it seems to tack up really quick. Maybe not as fast but uh, it definitely tacks up uh, pretty quick for an enamel. Uh, it is thin. I, I can't stress that enough. It is thin. I sprayed at 20 PSI and I was getting a lot of paint. Uh, seems to be a, a very similar uh, to my automotive acrylic, acrylic enamels that if you use the gloss and you want that high gloss from it, <coughs> Excuse me. It uh, it has to go on wet. Uh, looking for my tweezers here. I see a little piece of something sticking off of it. I did get a slight little run back here that. Uh, I believe I should be able to wet sand out with no problem tomorrow once it comes out of the, the dehydrator. So, uh, yeah, just no more, definitely no more than 20 PSI. Uh, that's a .5 needle nozzle. Uh, I almost think it probably come down a little bit because it is so thin. Um, but that was two coats, and um, it, it looks really good to me. Looks really even. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with the outcome. So, the hood up. And if you want, 
I, I, that went on pretty wet. I, I went on probably medium wet to a full wet. Um, and it's it's got a good gloss to it. Not, not what I want, but uh, we'll take care of that uh, uh, with the Automotive 2K. So we'll be back in the next portion of this video to get it 2K cleared. And I'm going to get this thing in a dehydrator. Okay, we're back at the paint booth here, finally. Uh, just so y'all know, it, it's been a couple of days. Um, I was a little hesitant on putting uh, 2K clear on this thing, even after um, uh, putting it in a dehydrator. Uh, it was still a little tacky feeling. Uh, and it was in the dehydrator for about eight hours at about 104. Um, I got the panel line done. Uh, panel line accent on the doors. I put some uh, some decals. I put a decal on the deck lid, and also the two front fenders, or oh, and the uh, the cow here. Um, and I was still concerned with uh, putting Automotive 2K clear on it uh, just because it's still it, this, uh, it, he says this is an acrylic enamel an automotive acrylic enamel uh, and it had a much stronger enamel smell to it than my automotive acrylic enamels I get from my automotive paint supply store so and plus it's it still was still tacky you know you know even after even today let's see it was Thursday I believe it's Monday now it was Thursday when I sprayed it um, I had to wet sand a few areas and um, touch them up and then I decided you know I I, I need a another coat on it to even those areas out and um, uh, it just I was still I, I was really worried about it emailed him he got back with with me um, and uh, it was less than 30 minutes he got back with me and said uh, I should be good to go as soon as it dries or after about eight hours um, so it's it's been a lot more than eight hours so according to him I should be good to go I see a little black spot on here I need to try to get off before I go any further So when I touched them up, when I touched it up, I wound up uh, pulling out my uh, Pache Eagle Talon, uh, and I got the TC3, so that just means it comes with all three needle nozzles, which is a .25, a .35, and a .68, I believe it is, and... I put on the point two five, and I, I got to say that this stuff sprayed. It was so much more controllable with as thin as this paint is. So, that being said, if uh, you plan on uh, trying this paint out, I, I really suggest a very small needle nozzle because it is so thin. And at twenty psi, it did good. Um, turn on the air compressor here. Uh, so that being said, we're going to try a slightly different method with the Automotive 2K. I'm not going to use any reducer. Uh, I mentioned in uh, the uh, Porsche build, I went back and looked at the video to see what I've done different. And I made two relatively quick passes, which were probably medium light coats. And then one wet heavy pass. So I'm going to try the same thing on here. And, uh, and and see what happens. 
see if I like the outcome because uh, it sure was a much better outcome on the uh, Porsche and uh, that was with reducer so I'm going without reducer on this one and then we'll do five minutes in between coats as per recommended get my respirator on I hear pressure. All right, 20 psi. And all I'm going to do is the the body, the hood, the deck lid, the fenders, and the cow. I'm not doing the frame and everything else. Oh, and to top it off, my lamp and my uh, spray booth went out anyway, so it wasn't spraying anything in here. It was dark. I hit it, already hit it with the tack rag. So let's uh, let's see how this works out. All right, we are back in five minutes for coat number two. All right, it's been five minutes and I, I can tell you now, it, it's, it's leveling out a whole lot better without any reducer in it. So here we go, going in for coat number, going in for coat number two.
All right, we'll be back in five minutes for the final coat. All right, five minutes. So now we're gonna hit, gonna slow the tempo down a little bit and hit it with a third and final wet coat. It's almost perfectly smooth. Very little orange peel in that. I don't think I'm going to hit this anymore. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. All right, that's it. And uh, I can get a light reflection. That. perfectly smooth. There's almost zero orange peel in it. Come on, give me a light reflection. There we go. So yeah, that's a lot better. So, there we go. Thank you all for watching Got Fuels Motor Car Garage. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Well, there it is. Next day. Haven't done anything to it.
there's a one or two little spots in it that I'll have to get out but you know it is what it is those things happen so uh, I'm not I'm not worried about it what I'm looking at is how smooth the paint wound up and the clear coat So yeah, you don't even have I don't even have a decal line over the decal. Super smooth, virtually no orange peel. So yeah. There you have it. Thank you for watching Got Fuels Motor Car Garage. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button and subscribe, please. Uh, it means a lot. Thank you all for watching. Got fuels in the motor car garage.